Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 8th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Luke chapter 10 and verse 20, which reads, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And friends, even the mention of those words should bring you much joy because your names are written in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I wanted to bring this to you as a text this morning because as we have learned many times throughout our studies together, there are a lot of things that we have been told that aren't exactly accurate or true to the word of God. And another of those things is the fact that we are all the children of God. Uh, that is not true, friends. While it may be true that we are all children according to creation, that we are all flesh, we are not the children of God necessarily just because we have been born upon this earth. We all know that Jesus said in order to enter into the kingdom, you must be born again. And so we must be born into the kingdom and we must become children of God. But to further validate this according to Scripture, let's just look at a couple of texts this morning and see what the Bible has to say on this subject. First of all, let's look at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, where we are told, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. But the first sentence is what we should pay attention to. He that commits sin is of the devil. He's not of God. He's of the devil. We see Jesus saying the same words in the same context when talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders of his day, in John chapter 8 and verse 44. Jesus says, You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he did not abide in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And so Jesus is basically saying, you do not abide in the truth, therefore there is no truth in you. That's why you belong to Satan. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. But in context, Jesus says, you are of your father the devil. And so they are children of the devil. Now, if those who have not the truth abiding in them and Jesus is the truth, if they do not belong to God, then they belong to the devil. And if God is not their father, then the devil is their father. And therefore, they are not the children of God, but they are the children of the devil. So let's be very careful what we tell the children of today because in many Bible stories and in many Bible songs that have become a part of Western culture, modern day Christianity, this is the message that we're presenting, that we're all the children of God. And on the surface, while this may not seem to present many problems, in the back of our subconscious it says, well, wait a minute, how can you be a child of God and live such a sinful life? So the messages contradict one another, and that's what causes confusion all the way through our lives as we grow and we begin to think for ourselves, and it just doesn't make sense. And so we have to be very careful how we communicate to others and what we say to others, just like we've talked about in the past, that God loves sinners but hates the sin. That's not true. If God loves the sinners, then why does he need to fear going to hell? It doesn't make the sense in the mind of the sinner, nor does the fact that we are all the children of God. Well, let's look at another text. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. Jesus is talking about the parable of the sower, where he's sowing his seed on good ground and on rocky ground. And in verse 38, he says, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. 
but the tares are the children of the wicked one. They're not the children of God. They're the children of the wicked one. And finally, let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, where Paul says, As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, all created beings, but especially unto those who are of the household of faith, who are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so the message is very clear here from Scripture, friends, that we are not all the children of God. And there are so many times when we're talking to people that we say things, and without even realizing we're doing it, we're simply passing on church cliches from one generation to the next. But we must understand that these cliches cause confusion. These old sayings of the church cause confusion in the mind of the unbeliever, and that's why they can't reconcile the truth, because we're not communicating to them a clear message. And so while this was a little bit of a lesson this morning, I want to leave you on a positive word of encouragement. And that's found within our text. When Jesus says, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject under you. Do not rejoice about the power that lies within you at the name of Jesus, but rather rejoice because your names are written in the kingdom of heaven. And that should cause us to want to say hallelujah, to sing praises unto God, because he has written us, he has bought us back, he's redeemed us, he's purchased us, and our names are written in the kingdom of heaven. And no matter what this world throws our way, no matter how many inconvenient circumstances we face in this life, friends rejoice, because your name is written in the kingdom of heaven, if you have repented of your sins and you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to be your salvation from those sins, to be your ticket into the kingdom of heaven. Rejoice because your names are written there. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I'm so grateful that you spent a few moments with us today. I pray that your heart has been touched. I pray that your mind has been challenged. I pray that your spirit has been blessed. And I pray that your walk has been refined as you seek to serve the Lord Jesus moment by moment, day by day in this life that he has blessed us with. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I will see you on the next video.